This is Daily Devotion, Episode 52, Exodus Chapter 4. Welcome to Daily Devotion. I'm your host, Cynthia Martin. Our goal each broadcast is to read the Word of God, comment, and pray the application of those truths to our lives in 15 minutes or or less. Let's get started this morning. Again, we're in Exodus chapter 5. After that, Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh and said, The Lord, the God of Israel, says, Let my people go, so that they may keep a feast to me in the wasteland. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? To whose voice am I to give ear and let Israel go? I have no knowledge of the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. And they said, The God of the Hebrews has come to us. Let us go three days' journey into the wasteland to make an offering to the Lord our God, so that he may not send death on us by disease or sword. And the king of Egypt said to them, Why do you, Moses and Aaron, take the people away from their work? Get back to your work. And Pharaoh said, truly, the people of the land are increasing in number and you are keeping them back from their work. The same day, Pharaoh gave orders to the overseers and those who were responsible for the work, saying, give these men no more dry stems for their brick making as you have been doing. Let them go and get the materials from themselves, but see that they make the same number of bricks as before and no less, for they have no love for work and they So they are crying out and saying, let us go make an offering to our God. Give the men harder work and see that they do it. Let them not give attention to these false words. And the overseers of the people and their responsible men went out and said to the people, Pharaoh says, I will give you no more dry stems. Go yourself and get dry stems wherever you are able, for your work is not to be any less. So the people were sent in all directions throughout the land of Egypt to get dry grass for stems. And the overseers went on driving them and saying, do your full day's work as before when there were no dry, when there were dry stems for you. And the responsible men of the children of Israel, whom Pharaoh overseers had put over them, were given blows and said to them, why have you not done your regular work in making bricks as before? Then the responsible men of the children of Israel came to Pharaoh protesting, saying, why are you acting this way to your servants? They give us no dry stems, and they say to us, make bricks, and they give your servants blows, but it is your people who are in the wrong. But he said, you have no love for work. That is why you say, let's go and make an offering to the Lord. Now go, get back to your work. No dry stems will be given to you, but you are to make the full number of bricks. When the responsible men of the children of Israel saw that they were purposing evil when they said, the number of bricks which you have to make every day will be no less than before, And they came to face to face with Moses and Aaron, who were on their way when they came out from Pharaoh. And they said to them, may the Lord take note of you and be your judge, for you have given Pharaoh and his servants a bad opinion of us, putting a sword in their hands for our destruction. And Moses went back to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you done evil to this people? And why have you sent me? For from the time I came to Pharaoh to put your words before them, he has done evil to this people people and you have given them no help well this chapter is an interesting chapter Um, I think it's important that we point out that Pharaoh in his arrogance because we know that the Pharaoh of Egypt at at times I believe they were almost God themselves or like God or a God and he has no knowledge of the God of Israel and I wonder sometimes when people uh, rally or, or rare rave about uh, rage about uh, Christian non Christians who do not know the Lord why they make the decisions they do and why they they say and do things that are evil. It's because they have no understanding of who the God of Israel is. They have no understanding of who God is. Now, in their own pride and arrogance, their hearts many times are hard unless the Holy Spirit draws them. What we say and what we do just seems like uh, silliness to them. It may even come against what they believe. Um, In the day and time that we live in, we can certainly see that in our nation here in the United States, that the Christian voice, the Christian way of life just seems like it's a, a threat sometimes to some people. And they have no knowledge of who God is. Now, am I saying that Christianity has been represented correctly over the years? Not necessarily always. Sometimes, yes, but not necessarily always. And 
there are reasons that we are seen as uh, um, right-wing uh, extremist and radical um, people who hate and um, are are uh, judgmental. And I don't I don't believe that is true. I don't believe that that is what God would have us to be as judgmental people. Um, but it, we have been portrayed and we even have had people who have represented us that way in the past. But this chapter is about those who don't know the Lord. They're, they're in league, whether they know it or not, with our enemy, um, Satan. And he's evil. There's no way around it. We cannot explain um, or reason with evil. Unless God does the drawing, then they their ears, it's like they have uh, stopped up ears. And so we need to pray that those that we go before, that God... Um, goes before us because you know there's later on a scripture we we see that the scripture says that he's the, god's the one who turns the hearts of kings and so in this situation though god had already warned moses that pharaoh's heart was going to be hardened and so as this this narrative goes on in the chapter chapter five of exodus we see that pharaoh gets this great idea that well, apparently they have too much time on their hands and um, we're going to have to let's make them work harder and then they'll stop these ideas. You know, and that is one of the ploys of the enemy. I just it, it, it is what it is. The ploy of the enemy is that we are so wore out that we don't have time. There's scripture that says the enemies, the, one of the devices or one of the tools of the enemy is to wear the saints out. And so here we have the story. And, I, and I've and i said many times that the Old Testament is a physical picture, a story in physical form of, of real people doing happening, real things happening to them and them having to endure real physical things. And so when we come into the New Testament and our day and age, the same things that happen to them in the physical realm or our natural realm where we can see happen to us now spiritually and it manifests out in our physical world. So what does that mean? That as God starts to call us and as we start getting our lives turned in his direction, the enemy comes against us and applies more pressure and let's tries to get us to buckle back down under his harness and under his his rule. And so we see that they gave the order for them not to, this particular version says dry stems. We know in the NIV it says straws, tells them they're, they're not gonna provide the straws anymore. You have to go and get your straws and make the same amount of bricks that we always have, they always have in the past. And so when work becomes harder and harder and harder, we know that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and gave us the garden to oversee. But then when sin came, they had to begin to work harder and harder. And it says, by the sweat of your brow, you make your living. And so that's part of sin in the land today. Working is godly. Having a chore and a purpose and something to do is, is necessary for who we are and how we were created. But when it becomes to the place that we're working um, harder and harder and harder and be only being able to produce less and less, to me, that's a sign that there's some demonic uh, oppression that the enemy is pushing people down. So as, this, as the, uh, the chapter goes on, we see that the Hebrew overseers, they don't understand. And they say, you know, may the Lord take note and be your judge. You know, because they're they're not believing that God would do this to them. And, and Moses is even a little bit, you know, why have you done this to the people? Why have you sent me? You know, he takes this so personally, Moses does. And so many times when we're leaders, we take on responsibility for the Lord's actions. You know, and we need to be careful that we recognize that it's not over yet, that God is still working. And I, I you know, I, I can't help but you know, sympathize a bit with Moses in this place because he went in to help the people and yet it looks like things are going harder. But you know what? That's when we need to encourage uh, us to persevere and stay the course because it isn't over yet. And I was reading uh, one of my commentaries and I noticed that um, archaeologist, ex, uh, archaeolog uh, archaeologist, <laughs> archaeologist, um, excavations have shown a difference in the bricks that were used in the building in the northeast of Egypt. And as the buildings went up, less and less straw was used. And I think it's really fascinating when archaeology uh, 
again confirms that yes, uh, scripture is true. And so I just want to pray for you today that as you go about your work, that you'll be again to recognize um, the hand of the Lord and the hand of the enemy um, and that you would continue to turn towards what God has told you to do, no matter what the enemy does to for you. So Father, we do, we come before you today and we say thank you. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for that you've given us life, Lord. We thank you that you've given us uh, uh, Jesus, that we can come before you, Lord, boldly into your throne room and we can lay our petitions out before you, Lord, and we can know that you will answer us because we are your children. And so, Father, today as we find ourselves before your throne, God, we just lay out our day before you. And uh, God, we ask that you would show us those places, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask you that you would show us the places in which that you have called us to go so that we can turn our eye and our bodies and our focus towards the place that you would have us go. And Lord, we ask that you would show us those places in which the enemy has put the load on, causing us to make those bricks, make those bricks, make those bricks. But Father, when that occurs, help us lift our heads and realize that, yes, it's a sign that deliverance is coming. That you have promised, oh God, that you would take us into those places. And it's the enemy's last ditch of effort to try to keep us corralled and keep us down from moving into what you would have for us. And Father, I bless those that are listening today. Lord, I bless those who are under a heavy load, those who have not realized and recognized where their heavy load has come from. Lord, I ask that you would cause them to see who it is that pushes, that presses, that oppresses and pushes down and makes work hard. That God, that they would recognize who it is that's doing what um, is causing them to become less and less and less. That, Father, they would recognize that you are not the God of less and less and less. You are the God of more and more and more. That you have come to give us life and more abundantly. But the enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy. And so, Father, I ask that you would help them to see who's working in their life and that they could take the appropriate action, Father, and that they would grab a hold of you and know, Lord God, that you're going to bring them deliverance. So, Father, I bless them today. And I ask, Lord God, that you would just go with us throughout our day today. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you for listening today. I'm Cynthia Martin. You can find more about me and what I do at realliferevised.com. I invite you to go over to the website and uh, sign up for our email list, set up an appointment with me if you would like to talk about some of the things that we've been talking about. Or if you need help, maybe you, you feel like I am under a heavy load and I have not been able to realize that it's the enemy that it's oppressing me. You can do that over at the website, again, realliferevised.com. So next time we're going to be discussing Exodus chapter 6. Until then, may you be filled to overflowing with his presence, his peace, his protection, and his purposes. See you next time on Daily Devotion.